Hello and welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about ad hoc conferencing resources. Now the idea with ad hoc conferencing is that I can set up a point to point call, but then add in a third party and convert it into a multi point call as necessary or ad hoc. And that's what ad hoc means is I can create a conference call whenever it's needed. So just to give you an example of how this works, let's say endpoint A was going to call endpoint B. Now at this point, all the call setup goes through the CCM. So we're talking about SIP call setup, the invite message, the trying, SDP, all of that. Okay, but once the ports are opened, then the media, the audio and the video, the media is point to point between A and B. However, if A at some point in the conversation while talking to B uh, decides that he or she wants to bring C into the conversation, there's a conference button on the phone that can be pressed and that will put B on hold and allow A to set up a new call leg over to endpoint C. Now once that call sets up, the media will be direct between endpoint A and endpoint C. And even though it looks like uh, there are two calls going on, there's actually only one because audio and video are not being sent between endpoints A and B because that call is on hold. So there's still a connection between them, but there's no media being sent. The only media being sent is between A and C. But if the user behind endpoint A presses that conference button a second time, it will put endpoint C on hold and open up a new communication to the CUCM. And this communication says, I want to merge these two calls that I have on hold into a multi-point call where we can all talk to each other. So the CUCM will select a media resource based on the settings that are configured for endpoint A because endpoint A is initiating the communication. And then once the CCM has selected that resource, it will do a call setup to transfer all three of these endpoints over to that audio bridge. And then the media will actually go from each of these endpoints to the audio bridge rather than between each other as before. So the audio bridge processes the audio and sends it out to each of these endpoints so that everybody can hear each other. Okay. At this point, uh, it's important to understand the process that the CCM goes through to decide which media resource it should use to set up the conference call. Okay, so to start with, we have something called media resource group lists, media resource groups, and of course, our individual media resources. Okay, and just to clarify, a conference bridge is a type of media resource. Now, when the CUCM selects a media resource, it all happens sort of top down, meaning that it looks at the media resource group list first, then it looks at the media resource groups, and then it chooses a media resource in that group. So all of this happens top down, but when you go to build your media resource group list, you have to configure them from the bottom up. So this means that you have to start with the individual media resources, and this is just a random sampling of the possible conference bridges that I threw together. Okay, so we have our media resources, and the next thing we need to do is put these media resources into different groups. Okay, so let's say we're going to put the CCM's built-in audio bridge, that's CFB2, and Cisco's meeting server into one group. Okay, so that's group one. Now let's say we want to put the iOS conference bridge and the enhanced conference bridge in another group. Okay, that's group two. And then we'll put the telepresence MCU and the telepresence conductor in a third group. And that's group three. Okay. Now we just need to put our groups into a list of groups, and this will be our media resource group list. So let's say we want group one and group two to be one list. Okay, that's list one. And then let's say we want group two and group three to be a second list, and that's list two. Okay, so what this means is that uh, when we press the conference button a second time, the CCM is gonna work top down, meaning it's first going to look in the media resource group list. Okay, but here we've created two different lists, so how does the CUCM know which list it should use? Well, we can configure this one of two ways. We could either add the media resource group list to the device pool that the phone uses, or we could just add the list to the phone directly. And I'll show you how to do both in just a few minutes. And for now, let's just say that we added list one to the endpoints device pool. So then in that case, the CUCM is going to go ahead and choose list one. Okay, next the CUCM is going to look at the groups within that list. In this case, these are groups one and two. Now remember, these groups are in a prioritized order, so whatever group is listed first, the CUCM will try that one first. So let's assume that the resources in that group are available, so then the final step is to choose a media resource from that group and then set up the conference call. Okay, so now let's bring all this together and let's configure an ad hoc conference bridge on the CUCM. And to keep things simple, uh, just so you can see how this works, I'm going to configure it for audio only. 
Now the audio conference bridge is built into the CUCM, uh, the one that we're going to use. It's built into the CUCM. Uh, however, this particular resource is a feature service and all feature services are disabled by default. So if you wanted to use the same audio bridge, the first thing you'd have to do is enable it under service activation. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go up to navigation and go to unified serviceability and then click go. Now you want to go to tools and uh, then click service activation. You'll select your server, then click go. Then you can scroll down just a little bit and you should be able to see it here under Cisco IP voice media streaming app. So if it's unchecked, you'll want to check it here and uh, then of course click save. And after that, you should be all set. Now, I've already got it set up here, so I'm just going to go back to the uh, main administration page. And remember, the first step is to configure your media resources. So for that, we're going to go up to Media Resources, then Conference Bridge. And if we click Find, we can see that we already have some listed here. And notice these two, uh, CFB2 and CFB3. There's no checkbox here to select them. You can't remove them or do anything with them. And that's because these are audio bridges that come built into the CCM. One is for the publisher and one is for the subscriber. These are the ones that we just turned on. So we're gonna actually use both of these to save us the trouble of configuring our own. But later, a few videos down the road, I'm gonna start a new series on CMS, Cisco Meeting Server. And so for that, we'd wanna create one specifically for CMS. Now to do that, you just click on Add New and configure it there. But again, I don't wanna get too sidetracked here. So We'll just save that for a future video. So for now, since our audio bridges uh, CFB2 and CFB3 are already set up for us, we're good to move on to the next step, and that's creating our media resource group. So to create the media resource group, we'll go to media resources and then media resource group. We're gonna click add new, and we'll give it a name. We'll say ad hoc underscore audio underscore MRG. And we'll choose CFB2 and CFB3 and then add both of those to the list. Now notice that I can't change the order here. There are no arrows on the side that allow me to order these. And that's because the media resource group isn't prioritized, so the order doesn't matter. We're just adding all the resources uh, that we might want to use and then we're going to click Save. Okay, next we'll create a media resource group list. So we'll go to Media Resources, then Media Resource Group List. We'll choose add new and we'll call this one ad hoc underscore audio underscore MRGL. And then here we want to add the media group we just created, uh, ad hoc audio MRG. And now notice that there are arrows on the side where we could order the groups uh, that we want to add to our list because these are prioritized. The order does matter. Of course, we're only putting in one group. So for this demonstration, it's kind of a moot point. But if you had multiple groups here, it certainly would matter. Okay, we'll go ahead and click Save. Okay, we're almost done, but remember we need to tell the CCM which media resource group list it should use when we press the conference button. Now, even if you have only one media resource group list configured, you still have to go through this step. So we can do that either by adding it to the endpoints device pool or we can add it to the phone directly. To add it to the device pool, you'll first want to go to System and then Device Pool. Then we'll click Find. Now you can either create a, a new one from scratch or you can just add it to an existing one, uh, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add it to uh, RTP phone here. So I'll click on that. Then just scroll down to this uh, second section here and you'll see Media Resource Group List. Then you can just add yours to the drop-down list and then click Save, simple as that. Now one really important thing to keep in mind is that if you decide to add the Media Resource Group List to the device pool, any phone that uses this device pool will also have access to these media resources. So if you don't want that, if you only want certain phones to have access to these media resources, then you should add it to those phones directly. To do this, just go to device, then phone, and you can add a new one or add it to an existing phone. Uh, I'm just going to choose A. McKinsey here and just add it to his phone. Then again, just scroll down a little bit here where it says Media Resource Group List. You'll select yours from the list, then click Save, and you're all set. 
And real quick, I just wanted to demo this to show it in action. So I've registered three 9971 phones, A on the bottom, B in the middle, and C on top. So I'm gonna come over to endpoint A, and first I'm gonna dial endpoint B. I'll answer it. Then I'm gonna come back down here to endpoint A and press this conference button here once. Okay, this put the middle phone on hold and gave me a new dial tone. So now I'm gonna dial endpoint C. Then I'll answer endpoint C. So remember at this point, only A and C are connected, but then I'm gonna go ahead and come down here and press the conference button one more time. And now the CUCM has transferred all three endpoints to the audio bridge. And we can see this because all of the phones say conference. Okay, and that's ad hoc conferencing. Okay, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.